to close enough for government work. And I'll make a comment about government um, while I'm thinking about it. About a year and a half or two years ago, I'm walking through the lobby of the Ritz Hotel in London, which is the hotel that Sally and I have been staying at for many years. And a Sikh Indian comes up to me, and the security guards think that he's going to accost me or something, you know. Uh, not my security guards, the security that are in the lobby of the, um, of the Ritz. And I said, thank you, thank you very much, because occasionally people come up to me, and even though I don't, I don't want people to come up to me, if you see me in an airport, please leave me alone. If you see, please, just fucking leave me alone. Anyway, but this Sikh was persistent, as Sikhs are. And uh, he said, I have to show you something, I have to show you something, please, I'm, uh, you know. And he wanted to kiss my feet, which is an Indian, but anyway. Um, so uh, I said, okay, so we're standing at the, um, the, um, uh, there, and then I said, okay, so <clears throat> I, I, um, I take him up to my suite, and, uh, and, uh, cause I, I was getting ready for a Zoom call. He opens up his laptop to government, uk.gov, which are government contracts. And there's about a million government contracts on any given day. And he flips through and he says, that one's mine, that one's mine, that one's mine. Thank you. And he says, I want to thank you. And he says, um, you made me rich. I didn't make anybody rich. I said, you, you, you followed up on my, my comments about government contracts. That nobody pays more for less than governments. Whether it's county, municipalities, Provinces, cities, uh, countries, NATO. And that's how I started 30 some years ago. And I did $50 million in revenue, my first year in business with no employees. A lease fax machine and a phone. Since that time, and since I started coaching you, meatheads, there's only been maybe 15, possibly 20 of the kids that have followed um, in those footsteps. Why? We already laid the foundation yesterday of why, didn't we? Because you're not serious. And it's not easy. So I, I'm not discounting this. Not it's hard. Um, the um, but this seat kid, not a kid, a man, maybe 35 years old, uh, with his uh, not they don't call him turbans. What do you call him? Is okay. Well, he did it, and uh, a couple times in the last two years since I told that story, when it happened, we had kids here in the seminar. Like during the breaks, at night, etc., cetera, um, find uh, half a dozen contracts, one of which was, uh, I found amusing, 40,000 pounds for a year to put up uh, signs um, that they changed the bus, st bus st stop in uh, Lancashire. 40,000 pounds. Another one, 240,000 pounds. To, uh, you know how when you, there's a, they, uh, construction people dig a hole in the roads and they put these yellow things over the hole so you don't fall in? 240,000 pounds to put those fucking things over holes on M25, which is a highway down south. 200 and motherfucking 40,000 pounds. And the guy went and hired some college kids. I mean, he paid him 60 grand or 80 grand and he pocketed the rest. Who would have fucking thunk it? Yeah, probably nobody in this room will do that. Because you'll open up uk.gov.fuck, whatever it is, and there is literally, now there's two million contracts. Where do I start? There's so much, I don't know, I don't know whether to shit or go blind. What should I do? Last year, 
about this time last year, because I get so much of that, where do I start shit, even though everything's fucking free on the site. We started QLA for Dummies. We still get emails. Where do I start? You start with one, you stupid cocksucker. And then you go to two, then you go to three, then you go. But we have just a slight inkling of why now, based on yesterday, what I went through. Now we, it's suggested that we have a QLA for super dummies. That's why when I tell you guys, there's no fucking competition in this. Zero. And then six months from now, um, when your wife or your significant other or some slag that you sleep next to asks you, well, how you doing? And you've done nothing. See, you forget all these stories. They're not stories, they're the truth. And the reason why I keep on pounding them and pounding them and pounding them, because as I said yesterday morning, I don't know if we were on YouTube, the seminar starts with, in American parlance, block, blocking and tackling first. I've got to learn how to block and tackle before you go to the next step. And uh, the foundation, that's why it's called Build Your Personal Foundation. It's a, and there's, there's a method to my madness. I got a letter yesterday from one of your wives. Um, the, um, and I uh, quite often get letters from your wives or your girlfriends asking me to release you from the cult. I'm going to say it again, just in case. Everybody understand what a cult is? To release you from the cult. Let him go. Please. We need him. I beg of you. <clears throat> many, many years ago, I got um, a phone call from a guy in his 90s uh, to l release his 60-year-old uh, son from the cult. We have had guys that attended the seminar that their families have kidnapped them and put them, um, what do you call it, um, not remission, um, when they take the kid and get him off drugs and they put him in a camp. Intervention. Intervention, thank you. We've had yous kidnapped by your families in an uh, intervention. And then most of them come back. We've had one kidnapped three times. And he just came coming back. So when you tell me your families are going to be supportive, what the fuck are you smoking? You're fucking delusional, just like I told you yesterday. And we're coming into the holiday season, and this is a real good time for them to be real and supportive. In the section in the, in the weekly report, what am I not telling Dan? Starting in about um, Thanksgiving time in America, when you don't go to Thanksgiving dinner, or you don't have a Thanksgiving dinner. You don't have to go to it if you don't have one, right? Of course, then other family members will have one, right? The mom, or the dad, or when you don't go, or you don't go to your brother's wedding. I told you the story yesterday, not a story. The guy went to his brother's wedding and he, he was sick to his stomach because he couldn't wait to get leave because it was just fucking waste of time. Because when you go back and you talk to these poor fuckers, poor being the operative word, and you realize what they talk about, and you used to be part of that group, you will be sick to your stomach. Your dot will melt off your fucking head. I always like to have either a, a turban or a dot, or, you know, because then I can whip, he's the whipping boy. He's the whipping boy. I haven't turned my attention to uh, Mr. Repeat here, but I will. We've got several days to go. Um, I.e., why he didn't get it the first time around. Because if you haven't asked him, it's got to be going through your little fucking P1 uh, amoeba brain. 
and why people come back three, four, five, six, twelve times in a row, painful tilt. Defaults a motherfucker. We have wives that meet the, the husbands at the airport because they think that they've been away with a woman. Because this, this, for many of you, is the first time you've devoted any effort whatsoever towards anything. Release me from my, the cult, which I find cute. I find cute. Okay, last night, the first thing you saw was what? Pass in your homework, please. Oh, it's there? Is it there? Okay, first movie was who? The lady hitting the kid upside the head. We watched that one first. Okay. And uh, basically, I'm assuming the kid did something to deserve it. No. No. And if that kid was white, is this the black, broad, the same one you saw? Uh, okay. If that was a white woman hitting a black kid, she'd be in jail, number one. Number two, it'd be across CNN and social media, correct? Yes. It was not on one news broadcasting except Fox and a couple others. Al Jazeera, one of my faves. If you want to get a real good um, level view of what's happening in the world, watch Al Jazeera. It's, a, it's an Arab station. I forget which one of the uh, Middle Eastern countries sponsors it. Uh, and uh, because there's the, the Fox view and the CNN view, and then Al Jazeera is pretty much in the middle. And um, but what's the takeaway? I mean, we all we, we, we discussed that. I mean, it's if it, if it was a black kid, you know, it would have been all hell would have broke, broke loose. But it shows you how biased the news is. What's the second thing you watched? <coughs> Small kids riding the boot. Okay, same thing we saw. Okay. Uh, you can train a kid to do anything, and your parents didn't train much to do much of anything that is high performance orientated. So that's the, you know that's the bottom line. And, and what else? Back work, bicycle. Okay. Now, how many engineers do we have in the room? You're fucked. <laughs> um, how long did it take the kid to learn to ride? Two weeks. And the dad? Yes. I never did, right. I've tried several times. I've never been able to do it. And, um, the, and then when uh, the dad went back to try to learn again, um, uh, it, w it was very difficult, whereas for the kid, the backward bicycle was, you know. And that's why kids, when, when they're little, can learn foreign languages so easy, et cetera. The, um, but that backward bicycle, is, or being able to ride the backward bicycle, is QLA. But if you can, don't continue to practice QLA like the backward bicycle, um, you lose it quickly. And as Deb, who's a 57-year-old, well-educated senior executive who's uh, implementing um, QLA, he said that uh, he has to immerse himself immerse himself. And we have other uh, kids that immerse themselves a lot more than, than, uh, than he does. You know, the thing, uh, low, uh, uh, whatever the name, you know, that machine, and uh, uh, turn on uh, day three, 1987 seminar, or turn on uh, how do you get the fucking uh, money, or uh, turn on uh, deal flow. We have some kids that have categorize all the stuff on that. And so as soon as they walk in the door, they say, what's the name of the machine? Alexa, do it. And we have people that sleep uh, listening to their affirmations. Some of the people have uh, hired, you know, Fiverr or Tenor to, uh, um, to have a voice uh, to um, copy uh, their affirmations and their goals. Um, some people, and don't ask me, I'm not going to kind of tape your fucking goals and affirmations, so don't ask me. Uh, but we've had some of you ask me, uh, can you please do that? I go, no, no, I can't. The, um, but the more, the 50 or 60 hours that we spend in the seminar, 
has to make up for, like if you're uh, 30 years old, you've lived about 240,000 hours. But the 60 hours can make up for the 240,000 hours if you go back and you put in 240,000 hours. What else? Anything else? Download. Okay. In his red suit. Was he wearing his red suit? Yes. I'm going to talk to you about that in January, Dan, your red suit. But um, when he came to me in 2003, he couldn't, he couldn't hardly speak English. And what was the takeaway of uh, Dan? You won't surpass your self image. Absolutely. And for some of you that have put down your goals, 10 million or 5 million or 100 million, I guarantee you, you won't do a dollar more than that. And when you put down some of you uh, associated your goals with time frame, and you put 40, 50, 35, and five years, seven years, I guarantee fucking to you, you will not exceed that. You don't, it's very difficult to exceed your wildest expectations. And even though I don't like President Obama, he had a bold, audacious goal. And when we talk about, about being the first black president, when we talk about goals and affirmations, they got to be over the top, fucking crazy. When I, when I uh, set the goals up for when I first started um, the company, um, I knew I wanted to be in the top five energy executives pay. Because um, I knew those guys were making, at that time, five, six, eight, nine, ten million bucks a year. I wanted to have the 50th largest company, energy company. Um, and when they threw me out, strangely enough, we were the 50th largest when the shareholders tossed me out. We were the 50th largest energy company, natural resource company on the planet. Uh, but I said I wanted to be a $2 billion company and I wound up being a $500 million company. Um, but um, so I didn't set my goals high enough. And uh, of course, then I had reverse engineered how I got successful. Since subsequent to that, I've I reverse engineered, so to speak. And that's what the QLA methodology, and that's what the seminar is based on. And now we have best, the best, the best practices that we update every, not every week, but uh, we update every month. Because these kids to go out and do these things uh, against the odds, like being able to do a lot of this on the internet without meeting them face to face, which is not what I recommend to you do, but the kids, because they're lazy. And they still uh, don't do it as quickly as many of the kids that did it back when in the 90s and early 2000s. Anything else about Dan? Yes, sir. Um, it's interesting you said, even if you do find yourself on a roll and you surpass your know, comfort zone, you will find ways to self sabotage. Yourself yep. Sabotage. Yep. Um, some of you uh, and the kids, I get emails from the kids out, out on YouTube land, think wrongly that you need a bespoke suit, meaning tailor-made. And t there's a difference between tailor-made and bespoke, which I'll, I'll get into later, but before you can pull, pull this off, pull this scam off, as you know, and you don't, you don't. The critical thing is you only have one time to make a first impression, and that's visual. The second impression you're going to make is when you open your big mouth, most of which you're going to, if you can spit the words out and you're not so nervous, uh, you're going to say, shite. Okay, YouTube, thank you for the death threats. Ciao. <laughs>